Hello, and welcome to the BNP Paribas Asset Management Talking Heads podcast. Every week, Talking Heads will bring you in-depth insight and analysis through the lens of sustainability on the topics that matter to investors. In this episode, we'll be discussing investing in asset-backed securities, or ABS. I'm Daniel Morris, Chief Market Strategist, and I'm delighted to be joined by Senior Portfolio Managers David Favier and Olivier Boutoil. Welcome, and thanks for joining me. Hello, Daniel. Thank you for having us. Hi, Daniel. So we think about the quite challenging environment for fixed income portfolio managers. Uh, We have rising rates so far really just in the U.S., but the ECB soon to follow. And I think it's quite interesting that if you look at the increase in policy rate expectations, and by that I mean if you look at what the markets expected for the deposit rate in the Eurozone, for the Fed funds rate at the beginning of the year, and what their expectations are now, the increase in those expectations has actually been about the same in the Eurozone as in the U.S. So clearly a quite dramatic change in the outlook. Uh, inflationary pressures not waning, not as transitory as the central bankers certainly hoped they would be. But now at the same time that we're, of course, still very much focused on inflation, we're adding growth worries to that. And recent disappointing uh, PMI figures from the Eurozone highlight the risks that we all face that the central bankers Uh, either make a policy mistake, meaning they hike too much and push the economies into a recession, or the argument in the U.S. at least is that a recession may be necessary uh, in order to get inflation back down to target. So a lot to evaluate. Uh, Also, we look at what's happening with the labor market and appreciate that so far with unemployment rates very low and falling, uh, anticipating also higher wage pressures. So in that environment, uh, Olivier, uh, David, you guys are looking at asset-backed securities. If I can ask you first to maybe give a brief introduction about your asset class, perhaps for listeners who aren't uh, as familiar with it, and then we'll go into a bit more how, how things look. Yeah, sure. So David and I, we invest in asset-backed securities. Uh, We manage investment strategies across the European asset-backed securities and uh, CLO securities, which is collateralized loan obligations. These instruments typically provide investors with access to underlying private loans granted by uh, financial institutions in most cases to either retail borrowers or also in the case of corporate loans obligations uh, to large corporate borrowers in the leverage loan finance market. Yes, yes, it's it's right. It, it gives actually the opportunity for a bank in the case of an asset-backed securities to refinance a portfolio of loans granted by that bank. It can be mortgages, it can be credit cards, it can be auto loans, it can be corporate loans, uh, as Olivier mentioned. But it's a um, it's a technique that is used for the last past two decades, I would say, and, and more if we look in the history books. But it, it's a very interesting product because it, it gives various risk return profile to the investors. And it's and it's why we, we do like very much these products and it, why we do invest in 100% in ABS and silos in our strategies. Thank you. That's very helpful. If we look at how the market has evolved over the course of the year, and I have a a chart that I follow that uh, lists the returns in different asset classes year to date. And if I take a look at this, I see that euro linkers or inflation linked bonds down about 8%, euro zone high yield 12%, euro government bonds 15%. So again, not a particularly easy environment for fixed income portfolio managers, uh, but I think ABS strategies perhaps are a bit different. Uh, so maybe tell us about how uh, you've been addressing the inflation and interest rate environment that we've had over the course of this year. Yes, yeah, sure. Thank you, Daniel. Indeed, the cocktail of uh, still pending COVID development, uh, mostly in uh, in China, uh, still sustained growth globally, and also uh, the war in Ukraine, which translates into high inflation pressures and high and rising rates has uh, triggered a sharp volatility and significant drawdowns in uh, financial markets overall. So, quite significant drawdowns have been felt in our European ABS and CLO markets also. So, 
the drawdowns we see in the European ABS investment strategies are typically about half the ones observed on uh, other mainstream fixed income European uh, investment strategies at, equiv at equivalent risk or rating levels. What we can say is that this achievement is mostly explained by the extremely low interest rate duration that we do have in European ABS and CLO strategies. We currently have below six months interest rate duration compared to mainstream fixed income strategies, which typically uh, display above two years interest rate duration. Then um, the negative performances we see in our ABS strategies are mostly explained by the broad risk of tone currently seen overall in the financial market and is driven also by relative value effects across the various asset classes within the broad financial markets. And the magnitude of these drawdowns in our European ABS and CLO strategies, investment strategies, then looks as a function simply of the credit spread duration and also the rating levels of ABS and CLOs securities we are invested in. One thing we haven't said, uh, thanks to the increasing rates, uh, because the increasing rates will be uh, one of the things the ECB will increase in, in order to reduce the inflation risk. And uh, is, is that because we are investing in, in floating rate notes and all our uh, coupons are linked to Euribor one month or Euribor three months, it will automatically increase the yield to maturity of our assets. We can see that uh, for a triple A strategy, we are above 2% of return. So um, it can be a very, very good point for this type of strategy. As you point out, uh, David, asset-backed securities are floating rate instruments, which certainly has been helpful uh, this year in terms of the performance relative to other fixed income asset classes. But I'd imagine that's also to some degree a double-edged sword insofar as rates then are also rising for households, and that would have an impact on the underlying credits that you're investing in. So how do you see that given what's happening with inflation, given what's happening with unemployment rates? Our assets are mainly driven for the deterioration, I would say, by the unemployment and the price of the underlying assets. Even if we see some increasing risk of recession, the unemployment is still oriented downward. So this is one good thing. If we look into details, recently we have seen that the house prices have increased. I'm saying recently, but we can see that over the last decade in Europe and the UK. And in case of default, it brings a buffer. It's the same thing for the auto loan market. It's more recent, of course, because it's mainly due by the shortage of the semiconductors. But I would say on, on the residential mortgage or the auto loan market, we don't have any fears uh, in terms of credit deterioration. Where we might have some concerns, it's more for the consumer loan or the credit card market, mainly because it's an unsecured loan market. And of course, inflation and increasing risks will obviously have an impact on weaker borrowers. Having said that, I just came back from a global conference in, in a ABS global conference, and I spoke with originators, and they have already embedded this view. They have already tightened their underwriting criteria. And even if we anticipate a deterioration, we, we have to keep in mind that these assets have a very short duration. Most of them are two years of maturity. But maybe we can say some words on the CLO. Uh, I leave the floor to Olivier. Yes, sure. Thank you, David. In the case of CLOs, uh, things are a bit different because CLOs typically provide uh, investors with uh, exposure to pool of uh, loans granted to uh, large corporates, mostly based in, uh, in Europe. And for sure, as inflation continues to spread across the global economy with the uh, rising cost of inputs and maybe a recession, which may weight on performances of corporate businesses, this we cannot exclude. Um, but then what we would argue is that not all corporate loan borrowers are equal uh, to that extent with impacts on profitability, on profitability depending not only on their pricing power, i.e. their ability to pass increased production costs to end customers, but also the impacts will uh, depend on the sector or the 
industry uh, into which the corporate loan borrowers operate. And then, uh, to that extent, industrial sectors most impacted by inflation are obviously those most heavily relying on energy and also uh, most affected raw materials, also uh, most involved in global supply chain issues, and ultimately the uh, corporate borrowers are depending on consumer spendings. Clearly, businesses with lower interest coverage ratios and higher exposure to most affected sectors, hence, will be at greater risk of default should the macro environment continue to deteriorate. To this regard, not only European CLOs bear fairly contained exposure to the most vulnerable sectors, but recent studies, uh, in particular from Moody's, also show interest coverage ratios uh, on European corporate borrowers uh, currently display high cushion, high level of cushion to actually absorb increased financing costs for most European corporate borrowers in the corporate loan market overall. And over the last couple of years, many companies have been able to refinance their debt to lock in cheap funding costs for the next five or seven years with the bulk of European corporate debt maturities now between 2026 and 2028, which removes significant refinancing pressures in the market. So all in all, should the risk of a pronounced recession be considered as fairly elevated at the moment, and even if we expect corporate default rates to get back quite soon to their long-term average of circa 3% compared to the current historical low at 0.7%, we would argue that European CLOs look in good shape to absorb the impacts of the deteriorating microenvironment. And lastly, uh, with the uh, floating rates-based uh, coupons and the Euribor three months soon back to positive territory, CLO-rated notes will mechanically start benefiting from expected rate hikes by the ECB. So if I can summarize some of the things that you've shared with us, uh, you pointed out that ABS strategies have, like other fixed income assets, been challenged so far this year, but have actually held up better uh, than many others. The reasons for that are twofold. One, generally low duration uh, of the strategies. And number two, the fact that there are broadly floating rate instruments, so the rate resets as interest rates rise. However, you pointed out the fact that they are variable interest rates, uh, that that also has an impact on the underlying credits. So if you think of household balance sheets when interest rates are rising. Uh, but you pointed out that it really depends on the asset class and you invest in various types of assets and you can take that risk into account and avoid those parts of the market where you do see higher risks than others. Well, David Olivier, thank you very much for sharing your expertise with us. That's it for this week's episode of Talking Heads. If you would like more information, please reach out to your BNP Paribas Asset Management contact or check out our Investor's Corner blog. We recommend subscribing to Talking Heads on your favorite podcast channel. You'll receive your podcast episodes every Monday afternoon. If you like the podcast, leave us a positive review and a nice rating. You've been listening to the BNP Paribas Asset Management Talking Heads podcast with me, Daniel Morris, David Favier, and Olivier Boutois. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. Please do join us next week. Until then, take care. This podcast presentation includes a discussion on current market events and is not intended as investment advice or an offer of products or services by BMP Paribas Asset Management. Please keep in mind that the information and analysis in this presentation is only current as of the publication date.